So let's talk about state in Kubernetes. There's two types of state. The first one, ephemeral. It goes away. That's what we just learned about. That's the stateless component here. I start a container, your application. I run it, and state goes away when that application is done and exits and goes back to stack. This is simple, it's easy, and it gives us powerful guarantees as systems engineers that we can destroy our application at any time. Furthermore, we have persistent state. This is the type of state you and I grew up with. This is the state that we learned when we started playing with computers when we were kids. If you unplug your computer and plug it back in, your state persists. It comes back. Imagine living in a world where you would restart your computer and you would lose everything on your hard drive. Persistent state is important because if we're writing stateful applications, we have reasonable expectations as software engineers that we should be able to save something and get it back later, regardless of how many times we've restarted our applications. That's a little bit hard to do in Kubernetes. And when I say hard, I don't want you to think it's impossible. I just want you to understand that it's new. I remember the first time learning about managing disks in Linux, and like the first time I was like, man, I really knocked out some LVM today. Like, really learned that really solid. And you know, it took me a few years to kind of get there and learn about how the file system worked and learn about these different types of state. Kubernetes is no different. It just takes some time to learn. It's possible in Kubernetes. That's the point of the keynote. I want you guys to understand that it is possible to do in Kubernetes, and that it might make sense for you and your engineering organization to do. Oh, man, I get asked this question so much. In fact, I remember it was just the other day we were at the office. One of our、uh, sales guys came up to me. He's like, "Chris, is Kubernetes ready for stateful workloads?" And I'm like, "I mean, yeah. I can give you my opinion here. I think so. Really, it depends on you and your team. It depends on how much you know, what your use cases is, and more importantly than anything else, what value are you getting out of Kubernetes? Why do you want to move there in the first place? Come see my talk later today. You'll learn all about the great, wonderful things Kubernetes can do for you." There's a lot of people in tech, thought leaders you might have heard of, who say that you know what, I don't really want to run stateful applications in Kubernetes. I think that's great. I think a lot of people might misunderstand what's happening here, though. The question isn't if Kubernetes is ready for state. The question is if you are ready to run stateful applications in Kubernetes.